Now then, the uh, latest autobiography expected to become a Christmas bestseller is the tale of one Alexander Orloff. You might not know the name, but you'll certainly recognise him when you see him. We have cross ocean. We have battle mongoose. Now, sit comfortable for final part in my family story. Well, not content with promoting a price comparing website, the arts creators are releasing a book documenting Alexander's fictional life story. So take that along with Churchill the dog who advertises the insurance company and that's a fat opera singer who tells us to go compare in a variety of locations. It's further evidence that perhaps characters created for ads are now becoming more than just a brand. Joining us now from Brand Forensics is branding expert Jonathan Gabe. Very good to see you, Jonathan. Good so to see you again. Is this the uh, holy grail of companies like these? You create a character yeah. to promote your website, to advertise it, to drive people to it. Now you make money out of the character itself. It's interesting, isn't it? They're actually turning them into garden gnomes. So you're going to have meerkat garden gnomes. It's even the smoking jacket that's going to come out as well. So they are definitely uh, stretching the brand, as you wish. Uh, the reason they're doing it, it's actually quite interesting because insurance really with with all due respect to insurance people out there but insurance isn't a very exciting product so what they do is that they they do something to make it so that you're going to remember that brand the problem i think is that you've got so many you're an elephant you've got a you've got a you've got an admiral, an admiral yeah, you've yeah. got a dog you've got a, and, and i can keep on going on and on and on the, it's so many of them it can become confusing but the good thing about meerkat is that the name Meerkat is actually within, it's very similar to what the brand's name is. And so I think that that's a, that's a great advantage. Is that how it developed? Do you think there was a play on words with some clever marketing people sitting around saying, you know, compare the market, Meerkat sounds, well, it depends how you say it. Well, I think the Meerkat... Is this how these things start? Well, I think that, well, I think that what happened with the Meerkat is that, that they first came onto our TV screen back in 2005, actually, in a, in a program called Meerkat Manor. And then the BBC started doing a documentary about meerkats in 2008, and it kind of it kind of escalated from there. And I think that they are they're not going to they're not going to upset anyone. You can't get upset by a meerkat. It's cuddly. It's fun. It's interesting, but most of all, it's there so that you can remember the brand name. Yeah, I mean, that's the difficulty, isn't it? I mean, do you think it'll last? I mean, I see Churchill the dogs in Panto, five Panto. It's going to be, be very busy, but there are a few of him, I suspect, this year. I mean, is it something we're going through? Is it a phase? Is it a Mr. Blobby phase? Is it a kind of novelty Christmas thing? Wow, you just said the, the key word. The B mean. word. You said, no, you said the C word, which is, which is going to be Christmas, because yeah. this is a very good launch in terms of this book in terms of when it's coming out. The first people to do this was back in 1931 with Coca-Cola when they reinvented Father Christmas by actually making him in red and white. Um, that was the first people to do this sort of idea in terms of the Christmas stuff. So they're getting this Christmas sales here. And so what happens is that you'll have a child who will say, I've got a toy meerkat, or in this case, a book, and my dad or my mum is driving a car which is actually um, insured by the same people clever stuff. Yeah, and isn't the other clever thing about it is it doesn't really matter what's in, I mean, I've read some of the extracts they've released, it doesn't really matter what's in the book, does it? Because it's something everyone's talking about like us now, and you say, I've got the book, you know, it makes a Christmas present. I mean, you, you're always looking around for Christmas presents. Oh, absolutely. And it's so 2010, isn't it? It's all about a person's struggle to make it even through adversity. So, I mean, even Cameron couldn't have wanted a better mascot than a meerkat, someone who makes it and makes it good. Mm. I mean, is there, uh, I know the meerkat came along, as you described, and then, I don't know, which maybe Churchill was around at the time, but the, yeah. but the fat opera singer, everyone's struggling. You've got to have something that stands out. Does it go too far? Do you end up being too ridiculous? Well, actually, the biggest problem that you have is that you remember the character and not the product or the service. That is the most serious pro uh, problem. But in this case, because the character, well, because the mere cat, is so similar in name to the actual brand, it's not such a problem. Can't be long before that opera singer brings out a, a CD, can it? I mean, it's... It's, it's, uh, it's, going, it's going crazy, actually. Yeah. I think it would be the X Factor. You'll have a mere cat, and you'll have an opera singer, and you'll have a dog. And don't forget the elephant in the room, because <laughs> everyone ignores that. Simon Cowell wants you there. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Jonathan Gabe there.